I testified of your great love. Well, I was a soul on fire. There was no doubt. Bible believing, saved and washed in the blood. But it wasn't until I stumbled and made my mistakes that I could know in my soul how amazing was grace. You brought me blessings out of the tragedy. You turned my old song into a symphony. And with your spirit living inside of me, I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. And now I know what you were talking about. Went from my head into my So how amazing was grace. this morning. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is my help and salvation. All you who hear, now to His temple draw me. Praise Him in glad adoration, we adore you. Praise to the Lord above all things so wondrously reigning. Shelters you under His wings and so gently sustaining. Have you not seen all that is needful has been sent by his gracious so Praise to the Lord who will prosper your work and defend you. Surely his goodness and mercy shall daily attend you. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do. If with his love he be friends. You have a friend in Jesus today. That's good news, friend. Before the 
hearts and pray with me. Father God, thank you for bringing us all here today to worship you. Thank you for being the Lord of heaven and earth and for sending your son to be the savior of the world. I pray that you would bless us as we go through our day and that you would bless the little, soon to be newest member of your kingdom family. It's in your name we pray. I invite you to have a seat as we uh, bring up our baptismal family. Good morning, Faith Life. How's everybody doing today? Uh, well, you're going to be much better after this because we have the joy this morning of welcoming a new daughter into our family and into the kingdom of baptism this morning. So uh, I am Pastor Alice, and I have Pastor Michelle coming up. You all can scooch on over right this way so we can get you all in here. So Brian, did you come up here to help your sister? Can you tell everybody who is this? What's her name? This is your sister, Emma. Yeah, and we are so glad that you all are here this morning. Uh, to join in this special baptism. So will you please join me in prayer? Uh, good morning, Lord. We thank you for uh, change and new things. Today's the first day of fall, um, and we are reminded that you are with us in all seasons and of change. And in this season of change in the bird is life with the new little one and uh, adding her to our kingdom here uh, as we serve you, Lord, we are just grateful. So we just ask that you be present in this service and we just lift this with all glory to you. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Well, listening to our songs this morning about new creations and the darkest day becoming a joyous day, it reminded me of, uh, there are a few scriptures that talk about baptism, but one really came to mind, and it comes from the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 3 through 4, and it says this, Or do you not know that all of us who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism and death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life. And that's what this is all about, this new life that came into the Berta's uh, household and into our uh, family here. So we're about ready to enter into this baptism. It's a covenantal promise. It's a promise that is a work of grace. Emma could have never done anything to earn this. She just gets it because she's chosen and loved by God, just like he chooses all of us to join in his family. Uh, so today is the day she gets marked as a new creation um, in God's family and in ours. And so I think Pastor Michelle has a gift to present. Do you guys want to scooch this so way? So for any me? celebration, we have to have gifts. Yes, that's right? true. So here, the first thing is, I bet you have one of those, Brian, right? And so that is something, the word of God, that you can open with your sister, and you guys can study together as you grow older. Is that exciting, Brian? He's like, I'll start right now. <laughs> He's ready to go. Awesome. I know you like books, don't you, Brian? And this Bible is the best book you'll ever have in your hands, so that's awesome. We're going to join our voices together now in declaring what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed, and so they should be right up here on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, Miss Emma, this is where we get to baptize you now. So she's sound asleep, but what do you think? Can I take her from you? All right. All right, come here, Emma. Oh, do you all see her beautiful outfit here? Oh, awesome. Well, Emma, today is a big, important day for you where you get to join in these waters with so many that have gone before you and will still come to experience and abide in Jesus. So Emma Rose Berta, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son. I know it's so cold. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm sorry, sweetheart. All right. Will you all pray with me? God, we just thank you for the blessing of Emma Rose Berta. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks for freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin and death 
and raising them into new life through this holy sacrament. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon Emma Rose, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of joy in your presence. Amen. Hey, Brian, I have a job. Will you walk with me as we show off your sister? Can we walk across the stage? We won't go downstairs, but will you walk with me? All right. Faith Life, here is your newest daughter. This is Emma Rose Berta. Let's give her a round of applause. You're going to wave, Brian? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and this is her big brother. Brian, what's the best part of being a big brother? Um, do you know? She's just wonderful, isn't she? Do you love her? How much do you love her? A whole lot? Okay, good. <laughs> good answer. All right, well, I'm going to give this beauty. Who gets to take her mom? We'll we'll give her to mom here. Awesome. Brian, do you want to hold this for your sister? I bet you have one of those at home too, don't you? Awesome. I'm going to do one more thing, Miss Emma, because I want you to receive the sign of the cross upon your head and upon your heart that you would know God's endless love and mercy today and all the days of your life as a marked, beloved daughter of his. Amen. Brian, should we do more gifts? I th- yes, I think Pastor Michelle has a couple more gifts, so here she comes. We're going to watch. So today, the God has called Emma Rose his daughter, um, and we have a banner so that she remembers it, and it's a verse from Isaiah, and it says, I have called you Emma, you are mine. <laughs> Best big brother. Awesome. The other thing we have is a candle. And this candle, where we're going to light it off the Christ candle here, is a representation of God's love. And there's lots of things. You were excited about this part, weren't you? Yes, we talked about this. Do you see, can you see anything that's on this candle? Do you know what any of these things are? There's a bird, a dove. Yeah, it talks about the Holy Spirit and the water. You're just excited because what do you get to do with this candle? You're going to blow it out, aren't you? But not just yet. Can we let Dad hold it? And then in just a minute... We'll let you blow it out, okay? I actually want to ask you a question, Brian, as we finish, because you brought something with church to church with you today. It's your favorite character from Toy Story. What's his name? Woody. Woody. And what does Woody have on the bottom of his boot? Do you remember the name that's under there? Does it say Andy? And it says that because Woody belongs to Andy, right? Well, today, it's kind of like, Brian, we're writing God's name, on the bottom of your sister's foot, because who does Emma belong to besides all of you? She belongs to God, doesn't she? And that's what today is all about, because in baptism, little Miss Emma here was very passive, right? She just submitted to today. And so that's what baptism is. It's a submission. It's not a rule done to another. It's a dynamic action by the Holy Spirit, where God says, this one is mine. And so today we celebrate Emma being Christ's. So, Emma, receive the benediction of the Lord. As you go on your way, Emma, may God go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, and within you to give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's give our newest member a big round of applause. Uh, Awesome. Okay, Brian, here's your big moment. Can you blow out the candle? Oh, you got it. One more time. Maybe. Yay! (laughs) Awesome. All right. You guys can take your seat. Thank you. Good morning, Faith Life. Hey, that was awesome. I, I, uh, we call those things gospel handles, by the way. When you can look at Toy Story and realize that Andy's at the bottom of the foot, which is just like Jesus, as Jesus writes his name on our lives as well. Nice job, Alice. Now I will watch Toy Story again with a whole new understanding. So there's a new one coming. Okay, well, man, I'm just blown away this morning. How are y'all doing? Good, good. I'm Pastor Paul, and it's so good to be here with you today. Welcome to Faith Life. If this is your first time or first couple times being here, we're so glad that you are here. We changed our name from St. Mark's a few weeks ago to Faith Life. That's where we're headed. And so don't be confused if you drove up to this place. I had a lady this last week. I overheard her. I was at Air Effects picking up my son. And I overheard I was wearing my Faith Life shirt. And she goes, that's that new Lutheran church. I thought, 
okay, all right, you know, that's great. We're not necessarily new, we've been around for 140 years, but it's a new name. So uh, if you're new here, we're so glad that you're here. Everybody online, we love, seeing, we love having you here and uh, welcome to Faith Life. Uh, we're continuing a series, just a four week series. It's kind of my annual time just to talk about what we're all about and uh, we're talking about living our faith and our life every day, connecting those. And today I wanna just read a short scripture passage to you, but one of the most important uh, in the New Testament. It's John 1. And uh, John, of all the gospels, he begins his gospel totally different than the rest of the gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. He really kind of gives you this background of what's, what's going on in history here, this substantial event of Jesus coming into our world. And he writes this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So, today we're talking about one simple thing. What's in a logo? (laughs) I did not plan on preaching this message, but as you can see outside on our signs, and as you can see inside, as you can see a few people wearing shirts that they received a couple weeks ago, we we have this new logo. And uh, I have to admit, when I first when we first started talking about a name change, I did not envision uh, a, a much of a logo. And then we got going with a rebranding company and we started talking about logos and things like this and few were submitted and we had one that just stuck. And I have to admit, I was, initially I thought, uh, I thought, yeah, what's in a logo, right? Big deal either way. But then I realized a logo says a lot about who you are. Now, without looking, because it's gonna be pretty hard for you to do this, what logos are you wearing right now? You're wearing a logo, I almost guarantee it. Whether it's polo, or it's Iowa Hawkeyes, or it's Nike, or it, I can't tell, I don't know. Ladies? If you brought a purse with you, I guarantee you, your purse has a name on it, right? All purses have names on them somewhere in there. We are a logo society. Almost everything that we wear has logos, even our glasses. My glasses here are Zenny. Anybody ever heard of Zenny glasses? Okay, well, whatever. (laughs) Thank you. Right? We, we are a logo society, and it makes sense because we resonate with logos. For example, what is this logo? Superman. Superman. S doesn't stand for stupid. <laughs> or short, or small, or selfish, or I mean a lot of other S words. We all know that this is Superman. We all know that this is the America's team. <laughs> I mean, How can just a simple star that is so beautiful (laughs) create such reaction from everybody, right? It's it's a logo, and of course, we get this, right? We see logos all the time. Google tells you in their logo, you can find anything here. Nike tells you in your your logo, you can do this. Coca-Cola says classic. Starbucks says, just drink me. (laughs) I don't really know what Starbucks says, but... I want to drink it, right? I mean, YouTube. What's so funny about Tube? Have you ever thought about this? YouTube. Does anybody remember the last time they watched TV on a tube? That's, I mean, our kids don't even know what a tube TV. You, you guys remember? Oh, never mind. I can't say it here. But you know the term for the TV that your parents used to call it, the blank tube. It's flat screen. It should be called you flat screen. And then there's this logo. And like I said before, uh, I didn't really think much of a logo until this kind of landed in our lap. As a staff, we worked with a company as we said, hey, we want to go to Faith Life. 
and they presented some different logos, and I don't think any single one of them jumped off the page to us, and we said, oh, we've got to have it. I'm not even sure this one did. But then after a while, it became alive, and it started to mean something to us. And so today, I just want to take some time to share with you uh, some of the things that the staff see in the logo and how it represents uh, what we believe here at Faith Life. Let me just start with uh, some of the basics here. It's a shield. Actually, technically, it's called a chevron. Does everybody know that? Okay, shield. It's a shield. And when you think about a shield, there's a very specific passage in the New Testament where Paul says, puts on the armor of God. Roman soldiers had shields. And he says, this is the shield of faith which, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. You see, the devil, his arrows are accusations. That's what the devil loves to do. Whenever you feel a flaming arrow, it's the devil saying you're not good enough, you're not worthy of God, God doesn't love you, you're a sinner, you're a terrible person. The devil is the great accuser. But the shield of faith stands up and says, no, 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 no. I, I've got this faith that is a firm foundation it's the thing that I hold on to, that I trust in my Savior, that I know that you can say whatever you want to, devil, but you cannot overcome me. Shield of faith. Now, let's be frank. It's also a soccer logo, okay? Can I get an amen? It's a soccer logo, baby, right? And you need a soccer jersey for this logo. And I know that all of you want this jersey. Because I've talked to so many people today who came up to me and said, how do I get one of those? Join the softball team. Jo <laughs> Join the softball team, right? Or the football team, yes. See, this is where in America, we're a little bit behind the rest of the world. We're stuck on this thing called football, and the rest of the world has moved to football, right? And if we lived anywhere besides the United States, we'd understand that. When I saw it, I thought, this is a soccer logo. So I had to get myself a soccer jersey. If you'd like a soccer jersey as well, talk to me. <laughs> Second thing the staff said, they looked at the white of the F and said, oh man, that reminds me of the forgiveness of God. You know, Isaiah, straight out of the gates, he says, hey, God says this, let's reason together. I get it, your sins are as red as scarlet. But what I'm gonna do through my Savior is I'm gonna make you white as snow. You're gonna be pure. You're gonna be loved. You're gonna be cleansed of all the problems, all the issues, all the sin in your life. And when you think about faith, we come to times of confession, forgiveness. We come to those times in faith because we say, I need a savior, my life is messed up, I've got problems going on in my life, I've sinned against my spouse, I've sinned against my kids, I've sinned against my coworkers, I need a savior. And in faith, we see Jesus, who says, I've taken your place on the cross, I've forgiven your sins, you're as white as snow. One of the things I also see with the F is I also see it as a shelter. Let's be honest, there are some times in our lives when you need a shelter. And my kids uh, tend to run to me or Ellie when they've bruised themselves or when they've realized that they've really done something wrong and they come for a big hug because they want to know, be reminded that they are loved. The F reminds me of that shelter of God who says, yes, you are loved. You, you, you don't have to run away from me. You can run to me. I'm not going to reject you. I am your shelter. So we saw this in the white. In the green, we saw the green representing life or growth. And uh, Jeremiah has this interesting passage where Jeremiah, most of the book of Jeremiah is kind of depressing, but there are certain parts where Jeremiah says, no, wait a second, there really is there really is something positive about God, and what he says is that the person who trusts in the Lord is gonna be like a tree that always has green leaves, that always is producing. If you go outside right now, you'll see trees that are green, that are turning to yellow, that are turning to brown, that are turning to red, and you know that winter is coming. Imagine a tree, not an evergreen, I get it, but imagine a tree that has these kind of leaves that is green all year round that you can go to. The place where we see this tree again, by the way, is in Revelation. 
There's going to be this tree in heaven that produces fruit year-round, constantly, and it's called the tree of life. And so at Faith Life, we realize that we want to be a church that's offering this kind of life to people, this type of growth to people. We also want to be a church that brings people in, and it says, you know what, we want to share this gospel with more and more and more people so they too can grow in their faith life, so they too can have this life that is everlasting. So we saw that in the green. We saw in the blue the stability of our Lutheran foundation. Next week I'm gonna talk about where we're going. It's the last sermon in this series. Talk about where we're headed, our future. To know where you're headed, you gotta see back in the past. We have almost 140 years of history here as a Lutheran congregation, and we stand on that history. It's like Paul in all of his letters. He writes to Timothy and everybody else. He says, you've gotta stay grounded in what you learned because it comes from wise people. This doesn't just fall out of the sky. And so we see the blue as this foundation that we have. When we look at the L, the staff talked about serving, how this looks like a person. By the way, does everybody see a person there? There's a head and then there's a body, arms out, ready to be the hands and feet of Jesus. This is what the staff saw. They saw a person who's serving. I had somebody who uh, emailed me when they saw the logo, and they said, this also looks like a person who's kneeling with their hands up to the Lord, saying, I just need you, Jesus. Staff also saw it as an anchor, something that, is, that holds you um, in the storm. So the staff saw that as well. And then finally, not to be totally sacrilegious or to you know, tell you the inside scoop of the staff, but um, I kind of said, I don't need to have this cross in the middle of a logo. Now, a lot of churches, they just stick a cross, right? Because you feel like obliged as a Christian to say, we've got to put the cross right in the middle. And lo and behold, uh, this comes with a cross because it's right there. And we said, well, that's perfect. It's not there, but it's there. We see it. It's not the center, of, it's the center of a logo, but it's not the center of a logo because all that we do is about the cross, what Jesus has done for us. Now, let me just ask you, I know I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Do you see anything else in the logo? If you do, you can shout it out. What do you see? Ah. The green with the arms out can be, mean family, togetherness. Yes, that's great. We're gonna add that one to the list, thank you. What else, anything else? I know I'm putting you on the spot, we don't usually do this. Yes, yes, the faith is over life. It's, it's above all, right? Life without faith, it just doesn't lead anywhere, right? Absolutely, that's very good. I love that too. Anybody else want to share? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Oh, yes, the L looks like a fish hook as we are fishers of men. Good one. I love it. I love it. That's great. Now, I, the reason I ask you this is just because, look, we live in a logo world. And I promise you, we had no idea when we came up with this logo that all these things were gonna come out of it. And we don't have a logo just to say, hey, we've got a logo. But a logo says something about you, doesn't it? Says something about you. The cool thing is that when I was preparing for this message, I remembered that Jesus is called the logo. But it's a little bit different. You see, in John 1, when John says the word became flesh, the word for word in Greek is logos, literally spelled L-O-G-O-S. And it's striking because that's, as you look down the line of language, you realize a lot of the words that we get come from that. And, you, and maybe logo is not a direct descendant of it, but it's striking, because if a logo says something about you, 
The word becoming flesh says everything about God's love for us. How fascinating that John would describe Jesus as the logo of God. In Hebrews 1, the writer of Hebrews 1 also says this about Jesus. He says, he is the exact representation of God. If you see Jesus, you've seen God. This is who God is, stamped, imprinted on the man Jesus. When you work with a rebranding company and they put together a logo, what they're most interested in is how does this logo tell everybody who you are? And when I was putting this together, I thought, oh my goodness. The Logos tells us everything that God wants us to know about who God is. God loves you. God sent God's one and only son for you. He went to the cross to forgive you of your sins. He rose from the grave to conquer death. He is reigning in heaven so that someday you will meet him in heaven. This is the message of the gospel. And God shows us this gospel by sending his logo into the world, who is Jesus. Some of you are wearing crosses. That's a logo, because it reminds you of Jesus. It reminds you of your faith. The greatest logo ever is Jesus, who came and made his dwelling among us. And he's greater than any logo that we could ever come up with because he became flesh. Let me ask you a question. What logo are you wearing in life? What, what do you live for? What do you stand for? What, what is it that, that the world sees in you when they look at you. I mean, they might see Iowa Hawkeyes. They might see Dallas Cowboys. Go fever at two o'clock today, can I get an amen? Come on, Caitlin Clark, right? You know, but what logo are you really wearing? When they look at you, do they see Jesus? This is, this is just a logo, honestly. Uh, somebody asked the other day, one of our partners here, he saw wearing a shirt, and he said, hey man, is that a soccer team? <laughs> I think we'll get a little bit of that. And he said, no, this is where I go to church. And that opened up a conversation, right, about what it means to be a Christian. What are you wearing for the world to see? This is why we talk about connecting faith and life. That's it because we want the world to see what we're all about. There's so many things going on here. This upcoming Sunday, we hold our denominational gathering. Uh, this upcoming week, there's gonna be tons of people here for that. In October, we're blessing our community for a whole week. We've got a Faith Life home that we've established. We're, we're, we're looking at starting another one. We're sending people to Panama. We've got 200 plus kids here on Wednesday nights. That's crazy. But they're hearing about Jesus. There's so many things that are going on here because we want people not just to see our logo, but to see Jesus in us. Will we please stand, let's pray. Let's pray. Lord God, we, we want to be people that when, when others look at us, they see you, Jesus. Not because we're perfect, not because we got everything figured out, not because our, our families aren't running around in all kinds of different directions, but because they see the love of Jesus, they see the grace of Jesus, the mercy of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus in us. Help us, Lord, to be kind of like little logos of Jesus in our world. As we interact with folks, as we spend time with our neighbors, our coworkers, our families, change our hearts, God, to reflect you more and more. Thanks for giving us this awesome church. Thanks for all the opportunities that you are placing before us, God. We want more and more people in our community to know you, Jesus, to have a life change 
through faith in you. Help us to do that as we witness to you. We love you, Jesus. Thank you for giving your life for us, and we pray this in your name and all God's people said. Amen.
Blessings to you as you connect your faith in life this week. We hope to see you here next week.